I need you to pray because this message is different. I'm beginning to see things in the Bible that God wanted me to see, and I, I'm going to do my best to tell you uh, of what it is. To pray that I speak the truth like God wants. God, give me your message. Help me speak it in Jesus' name. Amen. To start with, first of all, so you won't worry, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. God Almighty is all-powerful in control. Praise I want to tell you this, that God uses the devil a lot. If you read the book of Job, God used the devil to run Job through a test so Job could come twice of what he ever was before. God is using the devil in these last days to the glory of God. I want you to understand that the best you can, though it's hard for us to understand. I'm going to read Romans 8, 26, first of all, to give you encouragement and Maybe that it will help you keep, you know, in other words, I, I don't want to uh, get you down to the numbers. The truth will set you free. Romans 8, 28. God's good to me. I love you. And, and, and for everybody that's not able to come to church for different reasons, I love you. And I appreciate you listening to the Word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. We love you. We miss you. But God's in control. And, and I want everything to work out to the glory of God. I don't want people to get out of the habit of worshiping God. As, as Hebrews says, let's don't forsake the gathering. There will be times that we can't gather, but when we can, let's do gather. Praise God to worship God. I'm in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. I want to read there. And, and I don't want you to forget this for the next while as I talk. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. That's the Spirit of the living God. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit helps our infirmities. <laughs> Look, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. I run against that already today. That we don't, sometimes we don't know how to pray. But the Spirit of God in us knows, and as we pray the best we know how, the Spirit takes it on. And it's beside the throne of God, the Bible says, and Jesus is making intercession with us. The Spirit itself Helps our infirmities. We know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Notice that. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse 28 is what I want you to see. Help me read it. And we know that all things, not just good things, A-L-L -L things, everything works together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. My friend, everything is working to the glory of God in this day. We are in a time that I have never uh, experienced before. And i tell you what I believe it is. I actually believe that we're in the latter days. See, this season has been one of pandemic. And I didn't know what that was. I got to studying it. I said, is it an epidemic? What's the right word? Epidemic means one, one country or one state got a problem. But when it's pandemic, it's worldwide reaching everywhere. <coughs> so we're in a something that's worldwide. And what are we getting? We're getting protests. We're getting riots. Political craziness. I, I don't want to say the wrong word. Trouble, uncertainty. And, and then there's people that's afraid. They isolate themselves to where they're about to lose their mind. And there's health. There's loss of work. 
uh, there's people that can't even buy food right now, or if they did go to buy it, it's not on the shelf. Uh, they don't know what the next week holds. And one thing we know, and I know this, uh, 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 even though people might not agree, that this is not going to end too soon. I, I hate to tell you that. If it did end today, something else would take over tomorrow. And the reason is, is because what I see is now we're living in the days of Jacob's trouble. That God says in the last days there will be trouble like it never was before. And we're living in the last days. But all things work to good, work for good. And you know the only people that's going to rejoice is you and I. Let's don't let the devil get us down, beat us down, say, what's the use? Let me tell you what. Praise God. Like John the Revelator says, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Revelation, John showed where the people said, Lord, how much more are the people that we love as we see go through trouble and through trials and tests. And the Lord said, a little while longer, a little while longer. We're living in the latter days, I believe with all my heart, there's nothing to stop the, the last trumpet to start blowing today. Jesus Christ could come back today. We're going to live and rule and reign with Christ forever and ever. And God is getting us ready. And God is using this day we're living in to separate the sheep from the goats. God is using this day to get the people who love him to even be strengthened as we study God's word. Now the book of Daniel is a good one I want you to, I want to mention to you. It's one of the most important books of the Bible, and it's something about Daniel I never saw before. We may turn to it and read it. We might not have the time. But the book of Daniel is one of the most important prophetic books in the Bible. And as I studied it this week, I did not know that it was different than any other book. And you know why? I never saw this before. Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in the book of Daniel spoke of things that are then and what was happening at that moment. And, and God gave Daniel the interpretation. Daniel went through a lot, but it didn't bother him. Let me tell you something. You listen to me. He went through what? The lion's den. Did he worry about that? No, he didn't. And, and, and let me tell you, everything, Daniel kept his head up, he kept the faith, and he was unmovable, and praise God for that. That's chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. But something began to happen in chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And what I want you to notice is, that when you get to, I'm going to turn to Daniel chapter 10. The third year, verse 1, the king of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed to Daniel. His name was called Belshazzar. The thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing, had an understanding of the vision. And what I want you to know is that what Daniel saw bothered him. What it bothered him, chapter, you read it, chapter 7, 8, and 9. It didn't bother him about the lion's den. But something about what he began to see and feel began to bother him. And it says in chapter 10 that he began to pray and to fast and do without pleasant food and pleasant things. And he went 21 days, it said, praying. And all of a sudden, an angel came in verse 11. And he said, Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto you. Stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. Listen, he didn't fall over when it came to the lion's den. But he's on the ground when it comes to this. He's burdened. He's troubled. He cannot understand what's going on. He's seeing the year that we're living in. He's seeing 2020. 2020. 
He's saying that. He's saying that. I believe he is. Stand up right. For unto thee am I sent. And when he had spoken this word, I stood trembling. Daniel never was in that shape before. But Daniel has never seen and felt what he has felt and feeling at this moment. My friend, you and I haven't seen what we've seen until this year. Many things. The angel said to Daniel, fear not, Daniel. Daniel has never been afraid before, but something <laughs> that he was going through. Not that he was backing up, but he couldn't understand what, why his people were suffering. Why was there sickness and, 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 and riots and political problems and trouble everywhere? But that angel said in verse 12, from the first day you set your heart to understand to chasten yourself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for your words. Let me tell you, prayer is important, isn't it? But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, notice that, the prince, the demon spirit, the power of darkness of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me 21 days. Now listen, this is a powerful angel coming through and there is a demon spirit, a principality over Persia that fought and fought and fought, but Daniel kept praying and praying and praying. That devil says, I own this world, and God's people's not going to have the victory. I'm going to destroy them and drag them all to hell. The devil's an organized, great military leader in the evil world. He's got principalities, according to Ephesians 6. He's got powers. Rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, he's got captains all the way down to privates. And they are working day and night. Revelation 12, 12 says the devil knows his time short. He's going to work harder than he's ever worked before. The prince of the power of the Persia withstood me for 21 days, verse 13. But because you kept praying, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in what day? In the latter day. In the year that we're living in, 2020 right now, he's dead. For yet the vision is for many days. This is 537 B.C. So this was what? 2000, almost 2600 years ago. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground and became dumb. Listen, he's still troubled. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips, I opened my mouth, spake, he said unto them, and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me. Do you see the trouble, the sorrow? He wasn't filled with sorrow when he's thrown in the lion's den. But he's filled with sorrow with what he's saying right now in chapters 7, 8, 9, and 10. Oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me. I have retained no strength. How can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me straightway there remains no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Let me tell you, that man was going through it, wasn't he? And there came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man. He strengthened me and said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. My friend, I want to tell you, God says, don't you fear. God's in control. He's in control today. And I don't want you to get down to the dumps. The Bible says when you see trials, troubles, tests, Jacob's trouble coming that you're to rejoice and be exceeding great, greatly glad because great is your reward in heaven. Jesus Christ is soon coming back and what I'm reading and what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is he's close to coming today. Don't give up. Verse 20. And he said to me, Knowest thou wherefore I am come to thee? He said, Not you know why I came. Because you don't understand what's going on with your people. They're going through trouble and tests. They're getting tried and having sicknesses and problems like they never had before. He says, but let me tell you, it's for a reason. 
and you're seeing what's going to happen in the last days, which is many days from now. And look at verse 20. Knowest thou wherefore I'm come to thee, and now I return? I return to do what? Sit on a cloud and play my fiddle or harp? No! I now will return to do what? Fight with the prince of Persia. And when I'm gone forth, when I done finally, because you pray, whip the stew out of the prince of Persia and get by him, I now have to fight with the prince of Greece. He's going to attack me. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scriptures of truth, that there is none that beholdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. And Daniel, because you pray, I now give you the answer. All things work together for good, and God's in control. Yeah. Don't you give up. Yes, Daniel was a fearless man. Daniel went through things that never bothered him, whether it was a lion's den or, I, or the lies that was told on him. That didn't shake him. But he saw in the last day something he couldn't understand. My friend, we don't understand what's going on today. We cannot understand. It's not normal what's going on. Right now as I'm talking, there's people that hate each other, even in America. There's riots. There's shootings. There's killings. There's lying, there's stealing, there's uh, people lying about, the, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into politics, but that's a mess. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and this virus, I believe, but let me tell you, it's a mess. But God can use it, God's in control, and God didn't say, oh, no, what are they going to do next? This was planned, and God knew about it <laughs> a billion years ago. Before earth ever was created, God saw you and I standing here today, and he saw a person like me trying to say, be encouraged. The book of Daniel is the book, only book in the Bible that starts at the beginning and goes all the way through the time of the Gentiles, how that the Jews will turn against God and their hearts will be hardened, and then the Gentiles can be saved for a period of time until that last trumpet and Daniel said that when that trumpet blows he said that then the dead in Christ are right. he says that he says all that if you read that and, 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 and we see the time of the Gentiles the door will be closed then it will be open for the Jews only for the last part of the tribulation the last part of Jacob's trouble and then God's kingdom will be set up and we who love God will rule and reign with Christ from Israel, from Jerusalem for a thousand years for the devil will be shut up. Daniel saw that and he saw the final judgment. He saw the resurrection. He saw it all. But yet everything has to happen and it's happening and the trumpet's fixing to sound. My question tonight is, or today or this morning or what time it is, and you that's watching, are you ready? That last trumpet blows, are you going? And you'll say, well, if I don't go, I just won't accept the mark of the beast. That's not going to work. That's only for the Jews. And I can tell you this. The Bible says when the door of the Gentiles <coughs> close at that last trumpet, that he, the Holy Spirit, will be taken up, the church will go up, and only the Jews from every nation and kindred will have an opportunity for the thousand years because Satan will be locked up. The people who go up, the Gentiles who love God, will rule and reign with Christ for 1,000 years in Jerusalem. Daniel saw that. And then that devil's going to be loose for a little while. And then he come a tenth, and many, many of the Jews will flock at the amazement, believe that lie, but God's going to judge them, and the devil's going to be thrown in the lake of the fire where the Bible says the beast and the false prophets are begging for water. He's going to throw the devil in there with them. And everybody who doesn't know and follow the Lord is going to the lake of fire. <laughs> Daniel saw all the judgment. It bothered him. But God said it's got to happen. And 
what we're doing, we're being led up to the time of the coming of the Lord. Now, what can I say now to encourage you after that? I can just say Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. And my friend, a hundred years from today, what's going to matter? <coughs> what's going to matter is, where are you in eternity? A thousand years from today, a million years from today, don't let little things destroy you. Keep your eyes on the Lord. And I appreciate y'all, every one of you. You say, well, if, 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 if I get this and I die, it was time for me to do it. That's a good way to think. Don't be afraid. Yes, use wisdom. I mean, and I'll admit, you know, I, I need my faith encouraged. I need more faith. I need, it, it, Jesus said, well, if you got faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can remove a mountain. I still respect. I still use caution. But I'm telling you, everything is in the hands of God. And the devil is God's best so we don't think that. Everything. And see, the temporary reign of the devil, he thinks he's going to keep this earth. God's letting him keep thinking it. But Jesus is soon coming back. I love you. I love everyone. And I pray. I appreciate you who listening to this. I love you. And you might not understand what you're going through. But Jesus is Lord. Live as Christ. To die as gain. Trust God. And there's a joy in the Lord. His joy unspeakable and full of glory. I encourage you. In Jesus' name. Lynn Taylor, it's up to you. You do what needs to be done. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we've had together. The fellowship with Christ. Lord, listening to the words that Brother Reggie has brought us this morning through the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe he's a vessel that the Lord sends that word through. Lord, and time is close. I feel that for the simple fact of the things that are happening around us. It is different. It is completely a different, I guess, would be the word. We're, we're living in a time that we don't really understand, Brother Reggie said, but there's going to come a time that that we're going to need to know a whole lot more than we know right now. Some of us, me included. Lord, my prayer today would be that with the time short that we think that it is, it could be, Lord, that, that today would be the day of salvation for the people that don't know you. That, that they would reach to you. That they would be so stirred that, that they couldn't stand it. That they would know that, that the Lord Jesus was pulling at their hearts and and stir in their souls, Lord, they would bend on me and confess and come that you're Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and ask you to come into their life, Lord, and save them, repent of their sins, so that that mercy that you extended to us on Calvary, that we would have that hope of eternity in heaven. God, I love everybody in this church. I love our friends and neighbors. I love my family. And I ask you to guide and direct us all, Lord. Give us the right things that we need to do. Open our eyes and our minds and our souls to you, Lord, so that we absorb the things that we might be that light. We might be that person that turns that one seed, that one person that might not have been saved, and that they can see it on us and not that we got to tell them. Lord, I praise your name and I lift you above all and I thank you for all. And I'll always try to remember to give you the honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you.